Watervia was a diversified financial services company based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Before its acquisition by Wells Fargo in 2008, Watervia was the fourth largest bank holding company in the United States based on total assets. Watervia provided a broad range of banking, asset management, wealth management, and corporate and investment banking products and services. At its height, it was one of the largest providers of financial services in the United States, operating financial centers in 21 states and Washington, D.C., with locations from Connecticut to Florida and west to California. Watervia provided global services through more than 40 offices around the world. The purchase of Watchervia by Wells Fargo and Company was completed on December 31, 2008. Wells Fargo acquired Watchervia after a government-forced sale to avoid a failure of Watchervia. Starting in 2009, the Watchervia brand was absorbed into the Wells Fargo brand in a process that lasted three years. On October 15, 2011, the Watchervia brand was retired when the last bank branches in North Carolina were converted to Wells Fargo. Business Lines Watchervia was the product of a 2001 merger between the original Watchervia Corporation, based in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Charlotte-based First Union Corporation. The company was organized into four divisions, General Bank, Wealth Management, Capital Management, and Corporate and Investment Bank. It served retail brokerage clients under the name Watchervia Securities nationwide as well as in six Latin American countries, and investment banking clients in selected industries nationwide. In 2009, Watchervia Securities was the first Watchervia business to be converted to the Wells Fargo brand, when the business became Wells Fargo Advisors. Caliber was an independent consultant that was hired by Watchervia for the Family Wealth Group to research managers. The group no longer uses Caliber. The company's corporate and institutional capital markets and investment banking groups operated under the Watchervia Securities brand, while its asset management group operated under the Evergreen Investments brand until 2010, when the Evergreen Fund family merged with Wells Fargo Advantage Funds, and institutional and high net worth products merged with Wells Capital Management and its affiliates. Watchervia's private equity arm operated as Watchervia Capital Partners. Additionally, the asset-based lending group operated as Watchervia Capital Finance. Equals origin of corporate name equals. Watchervia has its origins in the Latin form of the Austrian name Achau. When Moravian settlers arrived in Batabra, North Carolina, in 1753, they gave this name to the land they acquired, because it resembled the Achau Valley along the Danube River. The area formerly known as Watchervia now makes up most of Forsyth County, and the largest city is now Winston-Salem. Equals First Union equals. First Union was founded as Union National Bank on June 2, 1908, a small banking desk in the lobby of a Charlotte hotel by H. M. Victor. The bank merged with First National Bank and Trust Company of Asheville, North Carolina, in 1958 to become First Union National Bank of North Carolina. First Union Corporation was incorporated in 1967. By the 1990s, it had grown into a southern regional powerhouse in a strategy mirroring its longtime rival on Tion Street in Charlotte, NCNB. In 1995, however, it acquired First Fidelity Bank Corporation of Newark, New Jersey at one stroke becoming a major player in the Northeast. Its northeastern footprint grew even larger in 1998, when it acquired Core State's Financial Corporation of Philadelphia. One of Cora State's predecessors, the Bank of North America, had been the first bank proposed, chartered and incorporated in America on December 31, 1781. A former Bank of North America branch in Philadelphia remains in operation today as a Wells Fargo branch. Equals Watchervia equals. Legacy Watchervia Corporation began on June 16, 1879 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina as the Watchervia National Bank. The bank was opened by William Lemley. In 1911, the bank merged with Watchervia Loan and Trust Company the largest trust company between Baltimore and New Orleans, which had been founded on June 15, 1893. 
Watervia grew to become one of the largest banks in the southeast partly on the strength of its accounts from the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, which was also headquartered in Winston-Salem. On December 12, 1986, Watchervia purchased First Atlanta. Founded as Atlanta National Bank on September 14, 1865, and later renamed to First National Bank of Atlanta, this institution was the oldest national bank in Atlanta. This purchase made Watchervia one of the few companies with dual headquarters, one in Winston-Salem and one in Atlanta. In 1991, Watchervia entered the South Carolina market by acquiring South Carolina National Corporation, founded as the Bank of Charleston in 1834. In 1998, Watervia acquired two Virginia-based banks, Jefferson National Bank and Central Fidelity Bank. In 1997, Watervia acquired both First United Bank Corp and American Bank Shares Incorporated, giving its first entry into Florida. In 2000, Watervia made its final purchase, which was Republic Security Bank. Equals merger of First Union and Watervia equals on April 16, 2001, First Union announced it would acquire Watchervia. First Union was the nominal survivor, and the merged bank was based in Charlotte and adopted First Union's corporate structure. However, as an important part of the merger, the merged bank took Watchervia's name and stock ticker symbol. This merger was viewed with great surprise by the financial press and security analysts. While Watchervia had been viewed as an acquisition candidate after running into problems with earnings and credit quality in 2000, the suitor shocked analysts as many speculated that Watchervia would be sold to Atlanta-based SunTrust. The deal met with skepticism and criticism. Analysts, remembering the problems with the core state's acquisition, were concerned about First Union's ability to merge with another large company. Winston-Salem's citizens and politicians suffered a blow to their civic pride because the merged company would be based in Charlotte. The city of Winston-Salem was concerned both by job losses and the loss of stature from losing a major corporate headquarters. First Union was concerned by the potential deposit attrition and customer loss in the city. First Union responded to these concerns by placing the wealth management in Carolina's region headquarters in Winston-Salem. On May 14, 2001, SunTrust announced a rival takeover bid for Watchervia, the first hostile takeover attempt in the banking sector in many years. In its effort to make the deal appeal to investors, SunTrust argued that it would provide a smoother transition than First Union and offered a higher cash price for Watchervia's stock than First Union. Watchervia's board of directors rejected SunTrust's offer and supported the merger with First Union. SunTrust continued its hostile takeover attempt, leading to a bitter battle over the summer between SunTrust and First Union. Both banks increased their offers for Watchervia, took out newspaper ads, mailed letters to shareholders, and initiated court battles to challenge each other's takeover bids. On August 3, 2001, Watchervia shareholders approved the First Union deal rejecting SunTrust's attempts to elect a new board of directors for Watchervia and ending SunTrust's hostile takeover attempt. Another problem concerned each bank's credit card division. In April 2001, Watchervia agreed to sell its $8 billion credit card portfolio to Bank One. The cards, which would have still been branded as Watchervia, would have been issued through Bank One's first USA division. First Union has sold its credit card portfolio to MBNA in August 2000. After entering into negotiations, the new Watchervia agreed to buy back its portfolio from Bank One in September 2001 and resell it to MBNA. Watchervia paid Bank One a $350 million termination fee. On September 4, 2001, First Union and Watchervia officially merged. In order to prevent a repeat of the core state's problems, the new Watchervia took its time phasing in the conversion of legacy Watchervia computer systems to First Union systems. The company first began converting systems in the southeast United States, before moving to First Union's branches in the northeast, which only had to change their signs to reflect the new company name and logo. This process ended on August 18, 2003, almost two years after the merger took place. In comparison to the core state's purchase, 
the merger of First Union and Watchervia was billed as a success by analysts. The company's deliberate pace of conversion seems to have prevented any large-scale customer attrition. In fact, Watchervia was ranked number one in customer satisfaction among major banks by the University of Michigan's annual American Customer Satisfaction Index for every year after the merger. When Watchervia and First Union merged, Charlotte's one, two, and three First Union buildings became one, two, and three Watchervia Center, and the 55-story First Union Financial Center in downtown Miami became the Watchervia Financial Center. The merger also affected the names of the indoor professional sports arenas in Philadelphia and Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Formerly known as the First Union Center and the First Union Spectrum and First Union Arena, they were renamed the Watchervia Center, Watchervia Spectrum, and Watchervia Arena at Casey Plaza, respectively. Equals merger and acquisition history equals the following is an illustration of the company's major mergers and acquisitions and historical predecessors. The list is not comprehensive. Equals acquisitions equals, between 2001 and 2006, Watchervia bought several other financial services companies in an attempt to become a national bank and comprehensive financial services company. Prudential Securities, Watchervia Securities and the Prudential Securities Division of Prudential Financial, Incorporated combined to form Watchervia Securities LLC on July 1, 2003. Watchervia owned a controlling 62% stake, while Prudential Financial retained the remaining 38%. At the time, the new firm had client assets of $532.1 billion, making it the nation's third largest full service retail brokerage firm based on assets. Metropolitan West Securities on October 22, 2003, Watchervia announced it would acquire Metropolitan West Securities, an affiliate company of Metropolitan West Financial. This acquisition added a portfolio of over $50 billion of securities on loan to the Watchervia Global Securities Lending Division. South Trust, on November 1, 2004, Watchervia completed the acquisition of Birmingham, Alabama-based South Trust Corporation a transaction valued at $14.3 billion. The merger created the largest bank in the southeast United States, the fourth largest bank in terms of holdings, and the second largest in terms of number of branches. Integration was completed by the end of 2005. Failed MBNA purchase, in June 2005, Watchervia negotiated to purchase Monolin credit card company MBNA. However, the deal fell through when Watchervia balked at MBNA's purchase price. Within a week of the deal's collapse, MBNA entered into an agreement to be purchased by Watchervia's chief rival, Bank of America. Watchervia received $100 million out of this deal, the result of an agreement Watchervia predecessor First Union made in 2000 when it sold its credit card portfolio to MBNA. This agreement required MBNA to pay this sum if it were ever sold to a competitor. In late 2005 Watchervia announced that it would end its relationship with MBNA and start up its own credit card division so that the bank could issue its own Visa cards. Westcorp Westcorp, Western Financial Bank's parent company, WFS Financial Incorporated and Watchervia announced a proposed acquisition by Watchervia in September 2005. Westcorp and WFS Financial Incorporated shareholders approved the acquisition on January 6, 2006 and on March 1, 2006, the merger was complete. This acquisition made Watchervia the ninth largest auto finance lender in the competitive U.S. auto finance market and provided Watchervia with a small retail and commercial banking presence in Southern California. On February 12, 2007, the former 19 Western Financial Bank branches opened under the Watchervia name. These branches became the launching point for a much larger Watchervia presence in California with the acquisition and integration of World Savings Bank in 2007. Golden West Financial World Savings Bank, Watchervia agreed to purchase Golden West Financial for a little under $25.5 billion on May 7, 2006. This acquisition gave Watchervia an additional 285 branch network spanning 10 states. Watchervia greatly raised its profile in California, 
where Golden West held $32 billion in deposits and operated 123 branches. Golden West, which operated branches under the name World Savings Bank, was the second largest savings and loan in the United States. The business was a small savings and loan in the San Francisco Bay Area when it was purchased in 1963 for $4 million by Herbert and Marion Sangela. Golden West specialized in option arms loans, marketed under the name Pick A Pay. These loans gave the borrower a choice of payment plans, including the option to defer paying a part of the interest owed, which was then added on to the balance of the loan. In 2006, Golden West Financial was named the most admired company in the mortgage services business by Fortune magazine. By the time Watchovia announced its acquisition, Golden West had over $125 billion in assets and 11,600 employees. By October 2, 2006 Watchovia had closed the acquisition of Golden West Financial Corporation. The Sangelas agreed to remain on the board at Watchovia. The Sangelas sold their firm at the top of the market, saying that they were growing older and wanted to devote themselves to philanthropy. A year earlier, in 2005, world savings lending had started to slow, after more than quadrupling since 1998. Some current and former Watchervia officials say that the merger was agreed to in days and that it was impossible to conduct a thorough vetting of world savings loans. They noted that the creditworthiness of world savings borrowers edged down from 2004 to 2006, while pick -A pay borrowers had credit scores well below the industry average for traditional loans. World savings lending volume dipped again in 2006 shortly after the sale to Watchovia was initiated. In 2007, after the merger, world savings, now known as Watchovia Mortgage began to attract more borrowers by taking a step that some regulators were starting to frown upon, and which the former World Savings Management had been resisting for years, it allowed borrowers to make monthly payments based on an annual interest rate of just 1%. While Watchovia Mortgage continued to scrutinize borrowers' ability to manage increased payments, the move to rock-bottom rates lured customers whose financial reliability was harder to verify. More than 70% of the pick -A pay loans were made in California, Florida and Arizona, where home prices have declined severely. New York Times reporter Floyd Norris has called World Savings a ticking time bomb that created zombie homeowners. While Watchervia chairman and CEO G. Kennedy Ken Thompson had described Golden West as a crown jewel, investors did not react positively to the deal at the time. Analysts have since said that Watchervia purchased Golden West at the peak of the U.S. housing boom. Watchervia Mortgage's mortgage-related problems led to Watchervia suffering right headdowns and losses that far exceeded the price paid in the acquisition, ending up in the fire sale of Watchervia to Wells Fargo. A. G. Edwards On May 31, 2007, Watchervia announced plans to purchase A. G. Edwards for $6.8 billion to create the United States' second-largest retail brokerage firm. The acquisition closed on October 1, 2007. In early March 2008 Watchervia began to phase out the A. G. Edwards brand in favor of a unified Watchervia Securities. Historical Data Watchervia, excluding subsidiaries, was the fourth-largest bank at the end of 2008. 2007 a Euro 2009 financial crisis, exposed to risky loans, such as adjustable rate mortgages acquired during the acquisition of Golden West Financial in 2006, Watchervia began to experience heavy losses in its loan portfolios during the subprime mortgage crisis. In the first quarter of 2007, Watchervia reported $2.3 billion in earnings, including acquisitions and divestitures. However, in the second quarter of 2008, Watchervia reported a much larger than anticipated $8.9 billion loss. On June 2, 2008, Watchervia Chief Executive Officer Ken Thompson was forced to retire. He had been head of Watchervia since 2000, while it was still known as First Union. The board replaced him on an interim basis with Chairman Lanty Smith. Smith had already replaced Thompson as chairman a month earlier. On July 9, 2008, Watchervia hired Treasury Undersecretary Bob Steele as chief executive in hopes that his experience would lead the company out of its difficulties. Equals government intervention equals, 
After Steele took over, he insisted that Watchavia would stay independent. However, its stock price plunged 27% on September 26 due to the seizure of Washington Mutual the previous night. On the same day, several businesses and institutional depositors withdrew money from their accounts in order to drop their balances below the $100,000 insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation a euro an event known in banking circles as a silent run. Ultimately, Watchervia lost a total of $5 billion in deposits that day a euro about 1% of the bank's total deposits. The large outflow of deposits attracted the attention of the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, which regulates national banks. Federal regulators pressured Watchervia to put itself up for sale over the weekend. Had Watchervia failed, it would have been a severe drain on the FDIC's insurance fund due to its size. As business halted for the weekend, Watchervia was already in FDIC broker talks with Citigroup and Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo initially emerged as the front runner to acquire the ailing Watchervia's banking operations, but backed out due to concerns over Watchervia's commercial loans. With no deal in place as September 28 dawned, regulators were concerned that Watchervia wouldn't have enough short term funding to open for business the next day. In order to obtain enough liquidity to do business, banks usually depend on short-term loans to each other. However, the markets had been so battered by a credit crisis related to the housing bubble that banks were skittish about making such loans. Under the circumstances, regulators feared that if customers pulled out more money, Watchervia wouldn't have enough liquidity to meet its obligations. This would have resulted in a failure dwarfing that of WAMU. When FDIC chairwoman Sheila Baird got word of Watchervia's situation, she initially decided to handle the situation like she'd handled WAMU a day earlier. Under this scenario, the controller of the currency would have seized Watchervia's banking assets and placed them under the receivership of the FDIC. The FDIC would have then sold the banking assets to the highest bidder. Bear called Steele on September 28 and told him that the FDIC would be auctioning off Watchervia's banking assets. Bear felt this would best protect the small banks. However, several federal regulators, led by the New York Fed President Tim Jithner, felt such a course would be politically unjustifiable so soon after WAMU's seizure. After a round of mediation between Jithner and Bear, the FDIC declared that Watchervia was systemically important to the health of the economy, and thus could not be allowed to fail. It was the first time the FDIC had made such a determination since the passage of a 1991 law allowing the FDIC to handle large bank failures on short notice. Later that night, in an FDIC brokered deal, Citigroup agreed to buy Watchervia's retail banking operations in an open bank transfer of ownership. The transaction would have been facilitated by the FDIC, with the concurrence of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and the Secretary of the Treasury in consultation with the President. The FDIC's open bank assistance procedures normally require the FDIC to find the cheapest way to rescue a failing bank. However, when a bank is deemed systemically important, the FDIC is allowed to bypass this requirement. Steele had little choice but to agree and the decision was announced on the morning of September 29, roughly 45 minutes before the markets opened. From this point on, Citigroup became the source of liquidity allowing Watchervia to continue to operate until the acquisition was complete. In its announcement, the FDIC stressed that Watchervia did not fail and was not placed into receivership. In addition, the FDIC said that the agency would absorb Citigroup's losses above $42 billion. Watchervia's loan portfolio was valued at $312 billion. In exchange for assuming this risk, the FDIC would receive $12 billion in preferred stock and warrants from Citigroup. The transaction would have been an all-stock transfer, with Watchervia Corporation stockholders to have received stock from Citigroup, valuing Watchervia's stock at about $1 per share for a total transaction value of about $2.16 billion. Citigroup would have also assumed Watchervia's senior and subordinated debt. Citigroup intended to sell $10 billion of new stock on the open market to recapitalize its purchased banking operations. 
The proposed closing date for the Watch Ervia purchase was by the end of the year, 2008. Watch Ervia expected to continue as a publicly traded company, retaining its retail brokerage arm, Watch Ervia Securities and Evergreen Mutual Funds. At the time, Watch Ervia Securities had 14,600 financial advisors and managed more than $1 trillion, third in the U.S. after Merrill Lynch and Citigroup Smith Barney. The announcement drew some criticism from Watch Ervia stockholders who felt the dollar per share price was too cheap. Some of them planned to try to defeat the deal when it came up for shareholder approval. However, institutional investors such as mutual funds and pension funds controlled 73% of Watch Ervia stock. Individual stockholders would have had to garner a significant amount of support from institutional shareholders to derail the sale. Also, several experts in corporate deal making told the Charlotte Observer that such a strategy is very risky since federal regulators helped broker the deal. One financial expert told the Observer that if Watch Ervia's shareholders voted the deal down, the OCC could have simply seized Watch Ervia and placed it into the receivership of the FDIC which would then sell it to Citigroup. Had this happened, Watch Ervia's shareholders risked being completely wiped out. Acquisition by Wells Fargo Though Citigroup was providing the liquidity that allowed Watch Ervia to continue to operate, Wells Fargo and Watch Ervia announced on October 3, 2008, that they had agreed to merge in an all-stock transaction requiring no government involvement. Wells Fargo announced it had agreed to acquire all of Watch Ervia for $15.1 billion in stock. Watch Ervia preferred the Wells Fargo deal because it would be worth more than the Citigroup deal and keep all of its businesses intact. Also, there is far less overlap between the banks, as Wells Fargo is dominant in the West and Midwest compared to the redundant footprint of Watch Ervia and Citibank along the East Coast. Both companies' boards unanimously approved the merger on the night of October 2. Citigroup explored its legal options and demanded that Watch Ervia and Wells Fargo cease discussions, claiming that Wells Fargo engaged in tortious interference with an exclusivity agreement between Citigroup and Watch Ervia. That agreement states in part that until October 6, 2008 Watch Ervia shall not, and shall not permit any of its subsidiaries or any of its or their respective offices directors. 2. Take any action to facilitate or encourage the submission of any acquisition proposal. Citigroup convinced Judge Charles E. Ramos of the Supreme Court of the State of New York, New York County to grant a preliminary injunction temporarily blocking the Wells Fargo deal. This ruling was later overturned by Judge James M. McGuire of the Supreme Court of the State of New York, Appellate Division, First Department, partly because he believed Ramos did not have the right to rule on the case in Connecticut. On October 9, 2008, Citigroup abandoned its attempt to purchase Watch Ervia's banking assets, allowing the Watch Ervia Wells Fargo merger to go through. However, Citigroup pursued $60 billion in claims, $20 billion in compensatory and $40 billion in punitive damages, against Watch Ervia and Wells Fargo for alleged violations of the exclusivity agreement. Wells Fargo settled this dispute with Citigroup Incorporated for $100 million on November 19, 2010. Citigroup may have been pressured by regulators to back out of the deal. Bear endorsed Wells Fargo's bid because it removed the FDIC from the picture. Jithna was furious claiming that the FDIC's reversal would undermine the government's ability to quickly rescue failing banks. However, Jithna's colleagues at the Fed were not willing to take responsibility for selling Watch Ervia. The Federal Reserve unanimously approved the merger with Wells Fargo on October 12, 2008. The combined company retained the Wells Fargo name, and was based in San Francisco. However, Charlotte remained as the headquarters for the combined company's East Coast banking operations, and Watch Ervia Securities remained in Charlotte. Three members of the Watch Ervia board joined the Wells Fargo board. The merger created the largest branch network in the United States. In filings unsealed two days before the merger approval in a New York federal court, Citigroup argued that its own deal was better for U.S. taxpayers and Watch Ervia shareholders. 
it said that it had exposed itself to substantial economic risk by stating its intent to rescue Watcherbia after less than 72 hours of due diligence. Citigroup had obtained an exclusive agreement in order to protect itself. Watcherbia suffered a $23.9 billion loss in the third quarter. In September 2008, the Internal Revenue Service issued a notice providing tax breaks to companies that acquire troubled banks. According to analysts, these tax breaks were worth billions of dollars to Wells Fargo. Vice Chairman Bill Thomas of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission indicated that these tax breaks may have been a factor in Wells Fargo's decision to purchase Watchervia. Wells Fargo's purchase of Watchervia closed on December 31, 2008. By the time Wells Fargo completed the acquisition of Watchervia, the byline of Wells Fargo Company was added to the logo. Controversies, a May 2007 New York Times article described Watchervia's negligence in screening or taking action against companies connected to identity theft. These companies used stolen identities to remove funds from personal Watchervia bank accounts via unsigned checks. The article goes on to say in all, Watchervia accepted $142 million of unsigned checks from companies that made unauthorized withdrawals from thousands of accounts, federal prosecutors say. Watchervia collected millions of dollars in fees from those companies, even as it failed to act on warnings, according to records. Furthermore, the article added in a lawsuit filed last year, the United States attorney in Philadelphia said Watchervia received thousands of warnings that it was processing fraudulent checks, but ignored them. On April 25, 2008, Watchervia agreed to pay up to $144 million to end the investigation without admitting wrongdoing. The investigation found that Watchervia had failed to conduct suitable due diligence, and that it would have discovered the thefts if it had followed normal procedures. The penalty is one of the largest ever demanded by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. In April 2008 Watchervia was also investigated by United States federal prosecutors as part of a probe into drug money laundering by Mexican and Colombian money transferring firms. The investigation of the alleged laundering also included other large U.S. banks. Wells Fargo has since admitted that its Watchervia unit was involved in money laundering for drug traffickers. It allowed money to be transferred in and out of Xis de Cambio, without proper due diligence, in violation of the Bank Secrecy Act. In March 2010 Watchervia agreed to pay a $160 million fine for involvement in Mexican drug cartel money laundering that could total up to $420 billion. Said Jeffrey Sloman, the chief U.S. prosecutor in the case, Watchervia's blatant disregard for our banking laws gave international cocaine cartels a virtual carte blanche to finance their operations. Chief Executive Officers G. Kennedy Thompson 2001 a Euro 2008, Robert K. Steele 2008. See also Bank of Baltimore. References External links Watchervia Corporate Website, Yahoo! A Euro Watchervia Corporation Company Profile.